Let's speak now to Dr. Omar Ashur, a lecturer in politics at the Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies at the University of Exeter. He joins us live from London. He's been with us, in fact, over the last few hours. Thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, talk us through uh, the different scenarios now in this crisis. What cards do you think Mubarak still has at this stage? No, I think he ran out of cards. Uh, the uh, the first card was the repression tactics. So we saw, you know, the reaction uh, in the first uh, days of the uh, uh, of the protest, uh, the pro democracy protest. First, sending the central security forces, uh, they couldn't because of the resilience and the, the bravery and the ter determination of the of Egyptian youth. Uh, 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 they, they couldn't break them. Uh, so after that, uh, the withdrawal of the central security forces and sending those uh, civilian closed uh, uh, thugs, uh, the uh, withdrawal of the police from the streets and releasing uh, convicted uh, criminals uh, uh, on the streets to attack houses and to attack banks and private properties, mainly to divert the energy of the protesters so that there is a, uh, the, some of them will have to go back to defend their families and defend their houses. Uh, and then that also failed because of the uh, quick formation of civil defense uh, uh, units and vigilante groups. Uh, and then after that, I involving the army and betting that the, the clashes may, may happen between the army and the protest, and that also failed. Mm. Uh, 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 and now uh, the, 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 there is nothing left. You know, he, he tried all the repressive tactics. He, from the beginning, he was dealing with this crisis as a security crisis. There, there is no political dimension to it uh, for, for him like there is no negotiations there is no uh, 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 tr like we saw with King Farouk or, uh -huh. or, or with uh, Abdel Nasser you know there is nothing compared to that it's okay. just that was actually going to be my, that, my that next question Omar in repressive uh, measures that was going to be my yeah. next question as we uh, saw earlier pictures there from state television in Egypt showing you know completely empty uh, uh, street bridges calm everything is calm that's uh, the view on Egyptian state TV I was going to ask you in fact you mentioned King Farouk can we draw any parallels uh, between these protests that we're seeing today in Egypt with uh, the revolution of 1952 that overthrew King Farouk or perhaps even the uprising in 1919? What we saw uh, in 2011, in, in January and February 2011, ha is not, has not been paralleled in the history of Egypt ever. This is the first time, hopefully, it will be the first time that Egyptian people uh, uh, overruled uh, a dictator and uh, and and uh, ended his uh, his tyranny and his period. In in 1952, the situation was quite different. That was a coup. Uh, the chain started uh, 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 as a coup by army officers that was welcomed uh, uh, in the uh, on the streets of Egypt uh, because the, the belief then uh, that uh, uh, King Farouk was a, a corrupt uh, a d dictator. Although, if you compare the Mubarak reign with King Farouk reign, it's just uh, completely... Uh, uh, the, 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 the King Farouk will look basically like Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. uh, he will look like a very uh, uh, nice and, and gentle guy. You know, the, the, uh, the head of the coup plotters uh, in 1952, Mohammed Naguib, there were elections in, in, in the army, not, not elections uh, uh, you know, for, for citizens, elections in the army. And Mohammed Naguib was the head of opposition, like he was uh, the, the, the enemy, the arch enemy of, of King Farouk. And he got elected and, and he became the head of the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, officers club. Uh, and then after that, he, he did the coup. So there was like freedoms uh, within uh, the army at that point. Um, there were political affiliation. The Muslim Brothers had members in the army that celebrated their graduations in, in the Muslim Brothers uh, headquarters. So it was a very different uh, dynamic. Hmm. Uh, and then so after that, when the coup the occurred, army... it was celebrated because... Sorry, Sorry, the army is key in this situation as well. In 1952, yeah, the, the army took the initiative and it was key uh, in, in transforming. And then after that was welcomed in the street. And then you had a period between 52 and 54 and that period could have transformed Egypt either into a, a parliamentary democracy or a dictatorship. And unfortunately, in the end, Nasser went the, uh, the dictatorship uh, way in, in 54. But that 52-54 was critical in the history of Egypt. What we see today is quite different. We, see, we, we saw basically Facebook uh, groups, young youth, you know, not, a, not, milita not in military uniform in any way. Some of them are Google executives. Some of them are, uh, uh, you know, doctors, engineers, businessmen. Uh, just, uh, you know, software uh, uh, or, or, or Facebook uh, fans, you know, who are sitting together and c could not 
deal with the frustration, the level of frustration that the Egyptian society is going through. And the, the spark of this was actually the police brutality against Khaled Saeed, uh, a blogger who was uh, uh, tortured and killed publicly uh, in Alexandria. And uh, we know the rest of the story, the, the creation of the uh, Kulina Khaled Saeed face, uh, Facebook group. We are all Khaled Saeed. Uh, and uh, they, they actually, this is not the first time they go to the street. The, mm. This group on April 6 and other movements, they went before, but they were in the hundreds only. Uh, and, and they have their video clips say, telling to the Egyptian people, we went for you before. We don't need this. We were, uh, mo most of them are actually, if you look at their background, are uh, upper middle class or upper class uh, young men. So they're, they're not suffering. They can continue their jobs and their lives and, you know, it's, uh, it can continue uh, uh, with a good life in Egypt. Uh, but they still came down. And after that, uh, you know, because of the, uh, of the conditions that Egypt was uh, going through, the, the, the right grievances, uh, uh, the, the widespread grievances, the, the second time people, mm. uh, so this struck a chord with, pe with people and a lot of, uh, uh, the, well, millions actually responded to their calls at, at a later stage. Mm. Uh, and we saw, so, and then w th there was obviously the role for the army. Uh, the army thankfully did not uh, uh, fire on, on protesters. And uh, I think that was pretty much made clear uh, even before the army statement uh, that the uh, probably the mid, mid ranks and the low ranks are not in that uh, mood mm -hmm. and the senior ranks uh, uh, as well, you know, did not give them uh, orders uh, so because the of army, the security the dilemma then, I explained before. The army then key, key in, in, in resolving uh, this, uh, this crisis. Well, let, let Dr. Omar Ashur, a lecturer in politics at the Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies at the University of Exeter. He joins us from London. Uh, I was just going to ask you before. Um, are you surprised at all at, at the turn of events in Egypt, at, at the nature of the violence of, of the last few days? Or do you think that this was something that perhaps we should have expected? No, I, I, to a large degree, I expected uh, uh, some violence on the part of the regime because uh, the, basically the protest undermines all its claims, uh, undermines its interests, and principally undermines its head. Uh, and therefore they uh, would have fought back. Uh, I just didn't expect how ugly can, how, how, how ugly are the tactics. Mm. So the idea of releasing convicts or, uh, you know, the, what we saw yesterday in front of the whole world attacking peaceful demonstrators that just one day before, two million of them were sitting do you uh, think in Tahrir the regime, Square in the most civilized way. Do you think the way. regime uh, sponsored or tolerated the violence we saw yesterday? Yeah, there, there is no doubt. I mean, uh, uh, the prime minister already mentioned something like that, that is going to do an investigation. Mm. There is already NDP uh, senior figures like Mustafa al Thiqi who is saying it's pretty much a, uh, a sponsor, the regime sponsored uh, violence. Uh, and those are people that, were, that are hired. And by now, everybody, I mean, everybody in, 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 uh, in Western capitals, the officials in Western capitals, uh, all of them uh, understand the, the dynamics of the game. And now, if you if you don't want to, to do it uh, by an official uh, uniform and by the stick of the Central Security Forces, send send others to do the dirty work for you. Uh, you know, and, but by now there is enough basically uh, police IDs that was gathered from uh, those thugs uh, that may make things very very clear. Hmm. We, we're getting again new lines here from from that ABC interview that President Mubarak has uh, uh, done. That he is saying that if he were to step down, the banned Islamists. Muslim Brotherhood would take power. Is it really a terrifying idea uh, if the Muslim oh, Brotherhood were to take... I think you should give up on that line. It's, uh, I think you should give up on that line. It's, uh, he, he, he weared it down. Mm. He's been using it since the, the 90s. It's, well, it's, 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 certainly it's, 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 what, it's what the international community the, the fears. You know, it's what the U.S. fears, even though they're not going to say it outright. It's, it's what they're concerned about, that the Muslim Brotherhood would take power in Egypt. Okay, let, let me first uh, say, this is not Iran. Let me say, say something about that. This is not the Iranian revolution. There is no Ayatollah Khomeini. There are no clergymen in this revolution. Mm. They are Facebook uh, democratic activists uh, who had very legitimate claims. Uh, and th th those claims were, uh, were very legitimate demands that were upheld by the overwhelming majority of the Egyptian people. Uh, the idea of the Muslim Brothers, the Muslim Brothers do exist in Egypt. They are a well-organized uh, popular group. And uh, they, they, you know, in a transition period and in a free, free and fair election, they can win or they can lose. We don't know yet. We haven't seen uh, a democracy in Egypt and we haven't seen free and fair elections to, to know that. Uh, if they, let's uh, go to the uh, extreme scenario, if they won, 
I am sure that we will see something very much along the lines of the AKP in Turkey, uh, not necessarily the, not, not uh, on the lines of uh, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Mm. Uh, so there for will for be some of quite, our viewers uh, who, who don't know Egyptian politics very well, uh, tell us more about the Muslim Brotherhoods, because, again, this is a movement that's been banned. They did very well in elections back in 2005. It wasn't the case this year. I mean, in fact, last year in 2010. Uh, how popular is the Muslim Brotherhood among Egyptians? The Muslim Brothers is uh, one of the, the oldest uh, political groups in Egypt. They were formed in the 1928 by Hassan al-Banna. Uh, they uh, rejected, uh, they had a paramilitary wing at one point uh, in the 40s and they rejected violence uh, in the late 60s uh, and 70s, abandoned completely political violence and delegitimized it. And since then, uh, nothing violent they did in, in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, they participated in, in electoral politics uh, since the 1940s, 1942. Uh, and uh, they, since, uh, since their release uh, by mm -hmm. President Sadat, because they had a big clash with uh, President Nasser, uh, since their release from prisons by President Sadat, they were able to uh, re-establish themselves on the streets of Egypt in the 70s and the 80s. And what we see now mm -hmm. is the accumulation of their, uh, uh, of their efforts. Uh, they, they are popular in Egypt for various reasons. Uh, one of them is their social services network. Mm. Uh, their, their rhetoric is quite attractive. They simplify, they simplify things in Egypt, uh, in, uh, simplify pro 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 problems and uh, retranslate them uh, with an Islamic tone, which uh, since the majority of Egyptians are uh, Sunni Muslims, they, uh, they understand the language as opposed, for example, to uh, a language full of Marxist slogans or leftist slogans. Uh, and uh, they, they really quite worked hard in the, in the 70s to, to rebuild their popularity. When they were released in the 70s, most of them were in their 50s, okay, 60s. Uh, I'm and,